back, y'all. This is more. Alexa, volume down. I've got this drawing I started a while back. I'm just going to keep working on it. Let's see what I can do with it. Mm. Normally I draw from my computer, but right now I'm having to use my computer as the uh, video here. Right, so. Start with some uh, some stuffs here. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch me be out of lead. No, I'm good. We're good. here so basically did the drawing then knocked it back and now I'm going back into it I see if we can add some detail make it look nice ish I'm trying to be really wary of what details I actually um Try my best, which probably won't happen, but I'm trying my best not to get sucked in by this portrait. And there's really a whole lot of other stuff going on. Questions, let me know. Or if there's anybody even watching. It's gonna be questions. Let me know. I can already tell you I'm not the most uh she's got some like crazy lips that I will not be able to get in here. <laughs> I'm I'm here. If I can pry myself away from other work, which usually never happens. How are you doing?
<laughs> yeah, today's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I got done a little earlier today than I normally do, but it's nice to draw when I can, which it's hardly ever. I think my problem with this whole Discord thing is going to be that uh, I like to work early and no one's ever up early. Gosh, if I could convince all of my tattoo clients to come in at like 8 o'clock in the morning, I would be set for life. But nobody's going to do that. Really riser. I don't know why I draw this small either, but I like to do really tiny stuff. Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, a, a lot of times, honestly, in the shadow, I try to leave as much undone uh, as I can. I find sometimes, if, uh, which I have a really a bad tendency to overwork a lot of stuff, uh, probably like I'm doing absolutely right now in, in the face. Yeah, human anatomy in, in school was the, the thing for sure that got me hooked on art. That's what got me sold. Uh, yeah, so honestly, uh, I usually draw on gray paper. And if not, I'll tone my paper with um, powder charcoal. Um, Somewhere around here, I'll I'll get. I got one right here actually. Ugh. So I got this awesome Fabriano paper um, that has this gray, and it's just just it's pretty light, but it's just enough to where you know I can actually put white on top of it. Um, and speaking of shadows, uh, this is this is a great one as far as like what you do and don't see you know, in the shadow bits. Um, this one's hard because I'm so structurally oriented that like I want to go in and carve everything out and then I have to go back and, and blur it out. Uh, but this one somehow came together where I was able to kind of just like slowly creep up on things. This one's definitely a fluke. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. I love the Karaskiro look to it. Uh, Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, like I, I definitely, I mean, you can see how I'm already starting to overwork this and I'll let's go ahead and do that, kind of knock it back. Um, but I like, uh, I've started, I started with uh, this gray paper stuff a long time ago. It was kind of like my thing, but I've gotten now to where I'll use white paper and, you know, charcoal over the top and then carve it away uh, with a kneaded eraser, almost like I'm painting. Um, I think I'm uh, definitely a better painter than I am, uh, let me say drawer <laughs> or draftsman, let me put it that way. Um, because there's just things in the um, the painting that I like more. And I'm already starting to I need a squint. Now that y'all had me look at that, I'm seeing all the things here that I'm doing wrong that aren't like that other one. Some things I definitely have to uh, uh, map a few things out here or else it's just wrong. But once I get it somewhere close, we'll get her going. Especially these eyes. I can just not do the eyes and just have them all in shadow well thank you yeah that's the, the biggest thing i've been trying to get with uh, my drawings lately is getting like a, a painterly texture to it that um because always drawing to me was just a tool to get to the painting what part of the body do i do first um when i'm drawing for sure, I try to I try my best to make sure everything stays in uh, about the same level of completion. So in the beginning, you know, they're all just like really loose circles, and I block it in, they run down the figure. Um, once I get it to a point like this, I'll start kind of top to bottom, um, putting in details where I want them. Um, and I will say with with these particularly. Um, I like for the face to have a little bit more detail than anything else. Um, just because I, I usually like for that to be the focal point. And also, I'm just a sucker for portraiture. So, yeah, I usually try to keep it pretty even. I'm going to try not to go too, too crazy on anything. Um, definitely a face person though. Like I, I, I do a lot of portraits and portraiture. Um, I will say I do love just people in general for sure. I'm definitely not the kind of person that just like starts somewhere and spirals out. I have to kind of map it all out first, and then once I'm somewhat confident, you know, where something's going to be, then I'll start kind of branching out from there. And I will tell you right now, I am not doing this lady justice. Yet, at least. She's a, a friend of mine that's modeled for a lot of my paintings here recently. Named Erin. And, uh, she's got a very, very, very unique look. Um, so let's see here. So for this one, I started off with, I've got, I think, two pencils. Um, I've got this uh, 2B pencil that I started off with, um, and then charcoal powder. And then um, the only other pencil I use is the uh, mechanical pencil here. And really, the only reason I'm using the mechanical pencil is, as you can tell, like how just minutely small um, I'm working. Normally... Um, like that other drawing, that's just, just one pencil. Um, I don't, re I, I like for my, my, uh, graphite to, to stay in kind of like a little bit of a lighter key. So it's, you know, you can definitely get more realistic and whatnot if you start kind of like creeping down from, what is this, a 2B, you know, into 8B, 9B, but, 
Um, I kind of like the look of kind of the lighter esque ness to it. I'll say now you say that I'm gonna start trying to use this a little bit more. I think I'm through the the biggest uh, detail parts. I wanted to be really like uh, specific around the eyes and the nose and all that stuff because the face is so small in this this particular drawing. And now I'm just gonna squint, squint, squint. And use my finger. Yeah, um, you know, in art school, I was instructed to use, you know, like every pencil in the box at some point, but the older I got and the more that I drew, I just stick with um, 2B, 3B is about my, my thing. Um, it's dark enough to where I can get some darks in there, but it's, you know, not so crazy that you can't get any light stuff in there. If that makes any sense. It's like the sweet spot for me. Um, but I'm going to try to do that same thing with the other one here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's why uh, I see a lot of people using the H in lighters. And um, I definitely have a tendency to... Uh, I like to smudge mine so much that, yeah, if I use an H or something like that, um, then, yeah, I'll absolutely just murder the, the paper, which is not what I'm looking to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, honestly, that, that sounds about right. I just got to where I started using, um, the H less and less. I had a bad tendency to, like, like, uh, like he was saying earlier, to bury and leave, uh, Dents in the paper, but I've gotten you know the more I paint, the more I'm like oh, I want to treat this like uh, treat it like paint as much as I can. Cause I like that kind of smoky you know, chiaroscuro effect. Um, Smudgers are the best. I'm gonna say. Now, let's see if we can't. What I like about smudging is what I'm doing right now is you can come back and like there's this extra set of brightness and it's like it looks almost like I'm putting white down, but really I'm just like rediscovering the um, the tone of the paper after you know a bunch of smudges. Um, my favorite thing to explore, whether it be paint or or drawing is uh lighting like, I, really, I really like the light source rembrandt-esque you know, like up here on the forehead i'm gonna be able to get this little highlight in just because i've been smudging it all day That's awesome. Yeah, art school was was my thing. I uh, started for like I was not artistic at all in high school, and middle school, and all that. Um, loved computers, so I was gonna do like animation or modeling for architecture or something like that. And then uh, I had to take drawing one. But honestly, the the class that got me to like just quit and go. Uh, changed my major to painting was um, figure drawing, like anatomy. Um, yeah, I wish. No, I uh, uh, I definitely needed school. I've got a lot of friends that are artists that are self-taught, and um, I just whew, I needed it. Um, I always like to tell people that like I, I wasn't ever naturally talented at, at drawing or the arts or anything like that um 
but I was really good at, at learning and just like being aggressively uh, uh, obsessive about something. Um, and so, yeah, when I got in college and decided that I wanted to learn how to draw, that's what I did. Just hold up and do my thing. And years later, um, selling a drawing here and there every once in a while. Definitely nothing crazy. Years later, I've got a couple people talking to me on, uh, what is this, Twitch. Yeah, I will say, so I started off, I loved computers back then, and we're talking uh, early 2000s. Um, and uh, loved technology back then, and ever since I switched to painting, uh, definitely became much more of a nerd for the classical elements of it. Um, like, I'll use my computer as far as I need to to design uh, stuff, but there's, to me, nothing can beat, like, you know, having a pencil and paper or, like, paints and thinners and brushes. Like, I like the really tactile thing. I like to, you know, be able to, like, have something that later I can junk up my studio with. You know, like I've got so many paintings and drawings just everywhere. Like if I stored them on a hard drive and just never saw them again, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I would be particularly happy. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I've got, oh god, I've got a bunch of friends that I work with that are just naturally gifted. Um, they're all self-taught, they're creative, that's, that's the thing. I have never thought that I was creative by any means. Um, it took me a long time to get to where I am as far and I'm still like trying my best to learn to be creative I just uh, uh, have a proclivity for craftsmanship if that makes sense so uh, a lot of times between like me and some of my other friends uh, other tattooers that are like making and designing all these like really beautiful tattoos um, I call them artists and I call myself a draftsman um, like I'm good at copying things and I'm getting better just I think now um, I'm just now getting better at like being able to look at a reference and select, okay, what is it about it that I want to take and use and what do I want to leave? Um, I think that was the biggest thing for me to learn. It's just like for a long time, I was just a damn copying machine. I could just like copy, 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 copy. And it just, it took me forever to be able to kind of look a little bit deeper and be like, okay, well, what about this do I like? What about this am I gonna keep? What things am I gonna like kind of let disappear? And I think doing these kind of smokier, chiaroscuro type things are kind of excellent, uh, what am I saying? It's kind of like a, a, a way of practicing being able to like, oh, what happens if I, uh, you know, leave this edge, like the back of the neck? I, I can see it in the reference pretty well, but it's not something that I'm you know, really care about. Let's let's see what happens if I get rid of it. Does it draw my eye over here? That that kind of junk. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm amazed at people that can like songwriting. That's another thing that always got me. Is like I love playing music, but gosh, writing a song just Never, never came to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I kind of hold on to the masters, yeah, a lot. They're they're kind of my guiding stars, and then kind of just figure out what I want to do on top of that. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm just now starting to kind of 
feel like uh, my craftsmanship's at a point that I'm happy with, and now I'm just trying to figure out, like, okay, like, what do I do with it? You know, like, uh, why why did the old masters paint certain way? Like, why did they leave some edges soft, some hard? It wasn't just specifically, you know, like, uh, things being closer and further. They, they were really selective about things here and there. Um, and I'm doing that thing right now where I'm just focusing on the portrait like I told myself I wouldn't. Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. They were, uh, uh, yeah. Da Vinci to me and Rembrandt, Caravaggio, all of them were masters for, for a reason. 100%. Though I feel like uh, Caravaggio to me was, uh, like I love his stuff to death, but I feel like he was kind of in my boat I say my boat, like I'm comparing myself to him. Um, he was in the boat where he was uh, just a better draftsman, I think, than a better draftsman than he was, like, artsy artist. I feel like uh, people like Rembrandt and um, Da Vinci and Vermeer, they, they really, you know, pioneered not only a genre in certain senses, but... Um, Starting to get too tight here. Why am I doing that? Um, they pioneered their own techniques as well, which I love. I feel like Caravaggio just kind of came around and like perfected a technique. It's very nice meeting you, uh, Jenny. Thank you. Let's see here. Oh yeah, Bernini. Oh my God, one of my favorites. Bernini is awesome. Rembrandt is awesome. Vermeer. Um, who else am I into? I mean, you got Van Eyck and all of them who are just like technical, just out the butthole. Awesome. Oh, yeah, Vermeer and his whole thing. I remember watching some stuff on Vermeer. Um, about him using, or possibly maybe, have he used the, uh, what is it, little camera trick? Camera obscura? Um, yeah, the Girl with the Pearl Earring is one of my favorites. Actually, if you happen to look at my Instagram, there's a painting that I did. I kind of base it off of Girl with the Pearl Earring, and it's actually this same model. Um, and it's honestly, it's kind of like a Rembrandt's version of Vermeer. Rembrandt in that I used his style of lighting, not really his style of painting. It was very Vermeer-ish technique, but using, um, kind of dark, uh, tenebristic. Is that tenebrism? Is that the, the candlelight type stuff? Yeah, Ramir. <laughs> that's uh, that's definitely how I, I what I tell myself when I'm doing it. At least that's funny. That's great. All right. So let's. that whole edge there oh that's awesome that would be gosh Muka is definitely on there his uh, was it the Slav epic uh, paintings I remember when I saw those the first time it blew my mind and then the first time I saw a picture of somebody standing next to it and you realize how just like absolutely ginormous they are 
that blew my mind as well. Yeah, Muko, Muko is another one. He was a freaking genius. Pioneered a whole genre, style, technique as well. He was a true dude. I can't believe I've got three followers. Look at me. For, for dinner right now. Yellow. Okay, I'm coming. Just informed by my uh, four-year-old that I've got to get my butt inside to eat. So I guess this will be uh, part four coming up soon. We'll see. I really want to get these tattoos added on there, but I guess that will have to be next time. Ah, you know what? I'm not too uh, unhappy with... I don't know if y'all can see that. Sweet. All right, I'll talk to y'all later.